what we are about to discuss is uh, and show you so you can see it with your own eyes is something so fundamentally important to who we are as a country what we represent what we say we intend to be and do and who we become it's a indian identity that needs to emerge we haven't quite perfectly figured it out yet because since 1905 when curzon divided bengal we've been convinced we've been brainwashed that india has two countries there's a hindu india there's a muslim india they did it for their own reasons those reasons are well known to you why the british used the policy of divide and rule but because we've been so brainwashed and with what happened in partition in 1947 and a lot of bitter memories horrors associated with it's been 80 years so how do you bridge and undo this brainwashing the steps get taken because the proof of the pudding is in the eating in the doing up until recently it was assumed that if we have a ministry of minority affairs that deals with minorities obviously the largest is muslims that the person who is muslim can only work for the interest of muslims the mold was broken controversially for the first time when a hindu woman smriti irani took on the portfolio of minority affairs minister now you know what's happening in india right now we are in the middle of a ram temple inauguration build up smriti irani however as in her capacity as minister of minority affairs is in saudi arabia yesterday she signed a historic deal ladies and gentlemen a record 1.75 lakh indian muslims will be able to visit saudi for the hajj in the coming year it's the highest ever in the recent past it's now become possible for women to go unaccompanied by men they can travel themselves if they want to go to makkah madina and there has been some sort of liberalization that not only is it the government machinery that organizes the hajj tours but there are private operators that are also brought in so competition has come in so therefore better facilities at lower rates are available to people who want to do the hajj which is a once in a lifetime trip now what you're seeing is uh, smriti irani now in one of the holiest sites of the islamic faith in saudi arabia where she's doing a tour with the saudi officials now many of you watching the telecast will be aware of of islamic history so makkah is the is the city of the birthplace of the prophet but medina is the place where he lived shifted to it can qualify perhaps as the first city in which you had the first muslims who congregated the first mosque was built large parts of the holy quran were spoken about revealed in the city of medina uh, for many people it's the cradle of the development of islam the birthplace of the prophet is in makka but the cradle of the development of islam is in medina which is why it's a large part uh of the hajj yatra now within this uh where you can see where all she's traveled okay uh she's been to the kuba mosque so the kuba mosque is considered to be the first mosque ever built in the lifetime of the prophet this is the early 7th century so 
the generic consent general consensus is this is the first mosque of the three major mosques in uh, Medina this was the first mosque that was ever built she's also been to Mount Uhud and for people who follow uh, history and Islamic history Mount Uhud is a very important site because remember the Prophet is born in Makkah but the Muslim religion in terms of the followers gather in Medina where of course he is prophesizing and a great battle was fought, fought on Mount Uhud between forces which were non-Islamic, pre-Islamic forces from Makkah who were trying to recapture Medina and their generals who later on converted to Islam. So this uh, battle was so important again is fought in early 7th century I think 600, 620, 625 uh, common era okay and in this mountain range uh, you had the followers of Islam uh, following on from what was known as the Battle of Badr and a much larger army of from Mecca had been sent to defeat them and recapture Medina and uh, they fought and won. Uh, many of the original martyrs for the Muslim faith died in this battle. There were further battles that were fought afterwards but these were the nascent times in which the nascent foothold of Islam which was just emerging from Medina was being established so these were important battles. Uh, so who's doing a tour of it? Well there you this is the mountain of Uhud this is a photograph you can see Smith Irani there with the Saudi official and the Indian delegation okay. Uh, this is a photograph outside the Kuba mosque uh, this is the perimeter of the Kuba Mosque. You can see Smith Irani uh, there uh, on your screens. Now, let me quickly open up uh, this conversation. Joining us uh, on the broadcast to discuss this further is Ambassador Suresh Kumar Goel. Major Mohammed Ali Shah is with us. Athar Zia is joining us. Shabbo Khan is with us on the broadcast as uh, well. So, let me start with you, uh, Ambassador Goel. Ambassador Goel, of course, this is a, a, a trip as a visit that is being hosted by the Saudis. And they are conducting the tour. They've come out and uh, signed uh, uh, the largest ever quota for Hajj pilgrims. And in fact, uh, they've taken Smriti Irani particularly on the tour to show her the facilities that are going to be provided to the uh, 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 Hajis from India who will be traveling in the, in, the, in the coming season. So clearly, the Saudis have also taken a very cognitive decision, a cognitive call that they not only want to uh, make life easier for uh, people doing the Hajj from India, but go out of their way to showcase it as well. Uh, Richard, thank you very much uh, and a very good afternoon to all of you and the people who are actually listening to this broadcast telecast. I remember when I joined the ministry in 1978 and then very soon thereafter, there was a reason for me to call on somebody in the ministry uh, who was called Joint Secretary Gulf. Even at that time, there were uh, West Asia Division and the Gulf Division. And uh, I remember that Joint Secretary Gulf, one major responsibility for him, <clears throat> and now I'm talking about 80s, uh, uh, Richard, one major responsibility used to be to organize or to look after the Hajj affairs. Uh, I'm mentioning this basically to remind uh, you and the people through this telecast that the government of India has been looking after Hajj and at that time there were no private operators. The Hajj was made possible only through Air India, through the government of India. There were private operators but it was very difficult because to get the visa for Saudi Arabia was really a task if I, if I may remind. So even from 80s onwards Officially, Hajj has been organized by the government of India. And the one thing that at that time was that the arrangements, tents and living accommodation, etc., etc., used to be quite a task. So the number having grown to 1,75,000, first of all, is impressive. And that there are private operators who will take 35,000 is impressive. That's 
Madam Smita Irani, uh, uh, the the minister has been taken to Medina by Saudi Arabian authorities. Is very good, but even at that time, the Hajj committee from India was taken to visit all these sites to basically. But the only difference is that there was no Ministry for Minority Affairs headed by a Parsi woman uh, who would be taken for a visit like this. It, there was a Hajj committee uh, which was actually looked after by the Ministry of External Affairs at that time. And it was headed by uh, a very grand uh, Muslim gentleman. Uh, if I rem I'm trying to remember the name at my time. So it's interesting that Hajj has not become an important uh, link between India and Saudi Arabia as part of the official relations. And that uh, this is uh, the way it is being conducted by, uh, by Saudis now is impressive. Rishabh. Yes. Uh, uh, j just for a qualification there, Smithy Rani, of course, is a practicing Hindu. She's married to Zubin Rani, who is a practicing Zoroastrian Pals Parsi, uh, as, uh, as uh, uh, has been referred to by the ambassador. Let me get uh, uh, Major Shah into this conversation. So, Major Shah, she's doing her job, okay, uh, which is to ensure that uh, the Hajj Hal Pilgrim Pilgrimage, which is a once in a lifetime major deal uh, for Muslims from all across the world, uh, not only that the maximum number of Indians get to go every year, but the facilities that they get, the treatment that they get is the best possible uh, that is available. And the Saudis are going out of their way uh, to roll out the red carpet, to make an effort to not only do things, but be seen to do things. What do you make of this visit? Well, Rishabh, firstly, I would uh, tell everyone that, you know, I would like to explain the difference between Hajj and Umrah. Right now, you know, a Hajj is uh, the pilgrimage which we all know, and Umrah is the lesser Hajj, which means Hajj has a specific time where you do your Tawaf. Tawaf is the seven rounds you do around the Kaaba Sharif in uh, Mecca, the holy Mecca, you the mosque. You see the famous picture, you see it's very often very, very popular. You can see it in calendars and pictures and photographs, it's there. And Umrah is, you can do Tawaf, you can visit Mecca and Medina any time of the year it need not be during the hajj time that's umrah so i've been very fortunate to have done one hajj and a couple of umrahs in fact the, 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 this was especially during the time when my father was posted as a diplomat in saudi arabia and ambassador goel just mentioned about there used to be an appointment of joint secretary gulf yes there was ambassador fabian who was the joint secretary gulf at that time, in fact, who was the later on, who was also later on the ambassador to Qatar, Indian ambassador to Qatar. Now, when we see Saudiat for a year, Hindustanio ko khas taur se, because Hajj is a duty of every single practicing Muslim in the world to do to perform Hajj once in his lifetime. It is his duty, so it is mandatory, and there are certain norms, there are certain conditions like you cannot go there on borrowed money, you cannot go there. Uh, you have to be self-sufficient, self-dependent when you do Hajj. And Medina is again, a very, there's a very holy mosque over there and I have very, very fond memories of both Mecca, Medina, be it Arafa. Arafa is the way we believe, where Akhriyat ke, ba, ke time, you know, when the Day of Judgment, when the, all the souls will gather in that place to actually hear the verdict from Allah, from God, about who's going to heaven, who's going to hell. So that is if you do good deeds. Okay. If you do uh, okay. Right. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks for the for the for the just just the Im Im important introductory part on this. So let me, um, Major Shah, get onto this on on the real issues, right? So you know what the issue has been. The issue has been that for since 1905, maybe even before that, we have been told all of us that we are two countries. There are Hindus and there are Muslims. They happen to occupy the same territory, but they're two completely different nations. We've gone through bitter divisions, bitter partition over it, and that aspect has not left us easily. It's not gone away. Now you have a, a Hindu woman who is a minister of minority affairs in Saudi Arabia, ensuring that not only the Hajj quota, but the facilities, the treatments are being reviewed, and all efforts are being made by the Saudis for the upcoming Hajj year. What do you make of this? Have we finally eroding some myths regarding our two nations? Okay, uh, Rishabh, the very fact is, of course, the relationship between India and Saudi Arabia is only growing and Prince Salman from Saudi Arabia 
Earlier, they had a very conservative approach, which means a woman would not perform, she would not go out, forget about doing a pilgrimage, forget about anything else, forget about going out. She couldn't do it without a mehram. Mehram is what? Mehram is either a husband or a son or a brother or a husband. So without, I mean, accompanied by a mehram, she had to wear a abhaya. Abhaya is not the hijab or the burqa. Abhaya is the black gown with your head covered. So now, earlier, those were the rules in Salah time, that's the prayer time. You couldn't be seen on the streets in Saudi Arabia. You had, irrespective of whichever religion you belong to, you have to be inside the house or in the mosque in Salah time. Otherwise, the mutawas, those are the religious police. They don't have mutawa, the moral police, they will catch you. Now, the very fact, when we see a delegation of Indians, when we see a non-Muslims who are there in Mecca, uh, inspecting things on ground, it is a very, very welcome step. In fact, when I was in the army as well, I have led Havans, I have led the Mandir Parade. So we as Indians, I would say, India is a very, very secular country. For us, we our humanity came before religion, in fact, and religion came much after that. So I think it's a very, very good move. And it is something we have to show to the world that, you know, in India, as Indians, we believe that we are all one. The humanity is greater than any religion, in fact. So the very fact is when Saudi Arabia also now they're opening up to a more broad minded approach. Prince Salman has made a lot of developments like women couldn't yes. be allowed to be to be driving Saudi Arabia. Yeah, they couldn't, couldn't now, drive, right? Yeah, yeah. So that that's important for the growth of of, of Saudi Arabia, and uh, I'm uh, in it uh, to see uh, that uh, good things take place, so that in our lifetime we can say that yes, we contributed to a better world, uh, and not to just replicating uh, the nonsense of the past. Let me get uh, uh, Shabu Khan into this into this conversation. Shabu Khan ji, you are seeing that Spiti Rani is coming to Medina. Yesterday, they signed the Hajj ki deal. Now, 1,75,000 people have got to go to the Hajj in the Hajj. It is a record quota. And they have gone to Medina. They have gone to the Kuba Mosque perimeter. There is a lot of Uhud and the Mosque. This is the most important thing in Islam, the most important thing. जगहें हैं आपको कैसा लग रहा है इन इंडियन मुस्लिम शबू जी नहीं मुझे तो बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है और काफी मुझे खुशी हो रही कि हम जैसी औरतें हैं जो बिल्कुल जा सकती हैं और हम बारे में और उन्हें आवाज दिखाई तो मुझे तो ये बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है शबू जी जब हमें बोला जाता है कि देखिए देश में अब सरकार राइट विंग है हिंदुओं की सरकार है उनको आ, मुस्लिम से कोई लेना देना नहीं है आ, वो उनके इश्यूज पे इंटरेस्ट नहीं लेते हैं वो छोड़ो कि वो तो विश्व भर में खौफ किया जा रहा है कि यहाँ पर तो आ, 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 सारे जो आ, मुस्लिम हैं वो तो डर में रह रहे हैं कि वहाँ पर कुछ कत्ले आम ना हो जाए तो जो विश्व भर में लोग देख रहे हैं या देश भर में लोग देख रहे हैं उनको क्या कहना चाहेंगे आप कि ऐसा ऐसा माहौल है क्या नहीं ऐसा माहौल तो नहीं है ये तो माहौल लोगों ने बना रखा है ऐसा माहौल तो नहीं है क्योंकि हम लोग क्यों डरेंगे हम लोग अपने हिंदुस्तान में हैं और सेफ है कहीं बाहर से नहीं आए तो इस खौफ से डरना तो बिल्कुल बेकार है हम लोग नहीं डरते बिल्कुल हालांकि लोगों को भी समझाते और ऐसा लगता भी नहीं है कि जहाँ पर भी कहीं पर हम लोग खुद भी बाहर निकलते हैं फिर किसी से पूछते हैं हर मोहल्ले में हर जगह पर जाते हैं लोग ये बोलते हैं कि ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है फिर ये अफवाहें ये लोग कहाँ के आते हैं जो लोगों को दिलों में डर और अफवाह फैलाए हुए हैं भाई हम भी जहाँ पर रहते हैं वहाँ पर हिंदू भी है मुस्लिम भी है और हम लोगों में इतना एक है इतनी भाईचारा है तो उनको हमारे बगैर चैन नहीं हमें उनके बगैर चैन नहीं तो ये तो समझ में नहीं आता है कि कहाँ के लोग आके हम लोगों में दुजागी और ये सब कुछ फैला रहे हैं बाकी हम लोगों को तो कुछ भी नहीं है हम लोग बहुत अच्छे से रहते हैं और हमारा हिंदुस्तान से अच्छा तो कोई देश है ही नहीं हम समझते हैं कि हम लोग अपने भारत पे बहुत श्रेष्ठ हैं बहुत अच्छा हमारा हिंदुस्तान आपको शब्बो जी अब अब आपको पता है कि स्मृति जी के बारे में अभी जो अभी गई हैं इस इस ट्रिप के बारे में क्या कहना चाहेंगी आप कि वो आप आपने फोटो देखी होंगी कि अभी कुबा मॉस के सामने उनके उन्होंने फोटो खिंचवाई है बाहर से उहूद में बोल बोला कि वहाँ पर वहाँ पर भी घूम के आई हैं वहाँ का भी दौरा लगाया है उन्होंने इस इस ट्रिप के बारे में क्या सोच है आपकी क्या कहना चाहेंगे आप नहीं वो तो बहुत अच्छा लगा भाई वो हम लोगों के हक पे बोल रही हैं भाई देखिए जो पीड़ित औरतें है, औरतें हैं हम जैसे पीड़ित औरतें हैं अब जो पीड़ित नहीं हुई हैं जिनके साथ नहीं हादसे हुए हैं वो लोग 
हो चाहे वे हमारे समाज की हो या हिंदू समाज की हो वो किसी भी समाज की हो वो कुछ भी कह सकती हैं और हम जैसी जो पीड़ित महिलाएं हैं तलाक शुदा तो हमें लगता है कि ये स्मृति रानी बहुत अच्छा कर रही है और आगे भी उनको इस तरह से करना चाहिए हम उनके साथ हैं ओके लेट अथर जी आई दिस कॉन्वर्जेशन अथर जी यू नो सो यू हैव स्मृति रानी देर you have the indian ambassador uh, dr sohail khan uh, who is the indian envoy to saudi arabia uh, part of the delegation is a is a sikh individual who's part of of the of the uh, Indi- indian team there and they've all gone to medina they've gone to the kuba mosque they've signed the historic deal yesterday the saudis are also making an effort to sh- make sure that uh, the best facilities are available for indian indian pilgrims what do you make of all of this Disha, it is a very good thing which has happened, and it was long awaited and expected. India has the largest population of Muslims after Indonesia, so the quota has to be increased. The facilities of Hajis has to be uh, revamped and made better. And there was an earnest effort by Smriti Irani uh, to, I mean, uh, revisit, re-examine. and get whatever the best possible done and she has succeeded in it so uh, this uh, reflects the intention of the government to uh, what they say that sabka vikas and everybody is same and the government is concerned about everybody irrespective of religion caste and communities so uh, that uh, shows and that gives a good message all over the world as well as to the people in india that uh, the hatred and uh, uh, different kind of frictions and the positioning of the government uh, towards the muslims and other minorities has taken a positive uh, I mean development, and it has been perceived very well by everybody. Okay, so other ji, obviously, obviously, you know, there is no push button solution, and it's not, it's not as holistic and simple an answer. But in fact, as we speak, uh, you know, as we speak, Mohammad Shami just got his Arjuna Award. Uh, I don't know, maybe other ji can't hear us, so we'll come back to him once he can hear us more clearly. So, uh, uh, Major Shah, let me come come back into into this. The objective should be in an ideal basis. that we are all working towards a common good and the identity the religion the religiosity of the individual should not matter now you seen an indian delegation there that is consisting of a muslim indian ambassador a hindu indian minister and sikh members of the indian delegation all going to medina all doing the best they can for indian citizens who happen to be muslims for whom the hajj is an important trip I just mentioned Mohammad Shami as we speak. I just won an Arjuna Award. So this entire conceptualization that uh, there is uh, Hindu government is going to favor Hindus only and not work for Muslims, and they have to live in fear. Who knows what kind of riot and genocide is about to happen? Are we now getting beyond this? Dhire dhire. Firstly, yeah, it's a very very good question, Vishal. You know, I would like to hear everyone's misconceptions about the fact. As I said, Shabuji has told us. ये हिंदुस्तान से बेहतर कोई देश ही नहीं है माइनॉरिटीज के लिए और कोई ऐसा डर का माहौल नहीं है लोगों ने इसे बना बना रखा है कोई खतरे में नहीं है ना हिंदू ना मुसलमान तो लोगों ने ऐसा बना रखा है ऐसा कम्युनल माहौल सो द वेरी फैक्ट इज आई वुड अर्ज पीपल नॉट टू गो बाय द रूमर्स एंड टू गो बाय द एक्सपीरियंस नॉट टू गो ऑन से We live in a Hindu society in a, in a colony where they are primarily dominated by Hindus. Let me tell you, they are very peace-loving. They love me. They love us. We love them. And on our respective festivals, we meet and greet each other with a lot of love, with a lot of uh, gifts, with a lot of heart. So that kind of mahal, jo jiski log baat karte hain na, that's all punk up. Now, secondly, yes, you mentioned about Dr. Swail Khan, the Indian ambassador, the Sikh gentleman who is present over there. even the uh, indian army's defense attache to saudi arabia colonel grewal they have the same regiment of artillery in fact you all saw that on the viral video of sudan when sudan crisis happened we saw an indian army officer standing there and saying gentlemen do not worry ladies gentlemen do not worry with the indian army is here we are here to help you all that is colonel grewal 
So that is the ethos and spirit of every Indian and the Indian Army. So the very fact is when we have an Indian delegation over there of all uh, communities, it actually gives a message very loud and clear that yes, we are a salad bowl nation. We are not a melting pot in a salad bowl nation. Uh, a cucumber, a salad, a tomato, a potato live together. They coexist. There's unity of diversity in India. We are not a mental pot, mental melting pot, unlike the West, where one doesn't one is not really united. We have to see these are these are five fingers in my in a palm mm. If one finger gets fractured, I cannot clinch my wrist. I cannot. Uh, okay, but but again, oh, we, yes. we, we, so again, so the question is, and let me get ambassador ambassador Goel into this for people watching the telecast. Uh, the uh, in in the blue jacket, uh, that wearing the sunglasses, that's the Indian ambassador. That's Ambassador Sohail Khan, uh, and members of the Indian Indian delegation, uh, which includes people of all faiths. Uh, there you there you have it, and that is representative of India. People of of all faiths. If you go to any locality, you will meet people of all faiths. Doesn't make a difference. We've all been born and brought up here. We know that's perfectly normal. Uh, but for some people who think is abnormal, uh, it becomes a problem. A ambassador Goel. So now, it is fundamentally important. For a for a self realization that we have one day, maybe hopefully in our lifetime, sir, that transcended, gotten past that brainwashing, that we are constantly apprehensive, we are very tribal, uh, we are very identity focused. Uh, that uh, if it, it that somebody who is not of my identity, of my faith, of my caste, uh, cannot represent me, cannot work for me. Are we getting past that little by little? Rishabh, you have asked a very fundamental question about the Indian, uh, let us say, governance ethos. Now, right from the day, at least I, if I have to talk about my own personal experience, the right from the day when I began to work in the government, and that was in 1978. In the government, the religion is immaterial. You can be Muslim, you can be Parsi, you can be whatever it is, but the post that you hold is independent of your religion except one place. And let me mention that right away. You are not an ambassador in Saudi Arabia because simply the ambassador is also expected to look after the affairs of Earth. And from that point of view, he is required to travel to Mecca. And Mecca only a Muslim can travel to Mecca and therefore Per force, it is desirable that the ambassador is a Muslim, otherwise he can't look after Hajj affairs. Just like Smriti Irani also, Madam Minister, could not travel to Mecca, she travelled to Medina, but not to Mecca. Uh, that's that's a custom, you cannot challenge it. You can travel to al -Aqsa, you can travel anywhere at all. I have been to al -Aqsa, but uh, unless you are a Muslim, you cannot get into Mecca. That is given. Yes. And there Now, the point really here is, why are we discussing all these issues from the point of view of religion? As far as I know, ever since I was born, ever since I've been working, religion is a matter of my personal faith. I can believe in whatever I want. I may be, I may be an atheist. I can do whatever I want. But the point is, this should not impact on how the government functions. This should not impact on how a person is selected in the government services and how he's made to do his job. And I think for me, the happy thing really is that indeed from the day one till the day I retired in 2013, my religion wa was something that I left at home. Yeah. They left for the job. Once I was in the office, I was so and so looking after. You, you know, you know, Ambassador, well, that's the strangeness. It's a truism, right? All of us have gone up, grown up in this country. We've been born, educated. Uh, we, I know for a fact where I where I live, I, I hear the azan every morning. Uh, there is a gurdwara next to the masjid. There's a temple 10 meters away. Uh, there's traffic jam in between. People are coming, going. Uh, it's perfectly normal. We've all grown up like this. So we understand it. Uh, but somehow uh, an image is created. So now I just wanted to leave it. I wanted to think of a different image. So you're watching uh, photographs and visuals of Medina where you have a Hindu lady in a sari with her tikka, who is married to a Parsi, who serves in the BJP government. You have uh, Minister Murli Tharan, who is from Kerala. He is wearing his uh, former lungi there. You have an Indian ambassador, uh, who is the envoy there, who is 
uh, a Muslim, Do Ambassador Sohail Khan. Uh, you have Sikh members of the delegation. This is just what India is. These are not choices that have been made that, okay, we have to send a delegation, so we'll send one Hindu, one Muslim, one Sikh. No, these are just the people doing their jobs. It's perfectly normal. And that's how India represents. So, Atharzia, uh, let me just take a last quick word, word with, with you. Are we getting past the fear and apprehension? I know a lot more has to happen, but are we getting past the constant fear and apprehension, the constant brainwashing that, that there is two nations, there are two countries that are always at odds with each other? Yes, uh, Rishab, we are maturing. We are evolving and despite some hatred and vicious atmosphere, I am very sure that we will grow over all these things and become a united nation with positivity and with development as the main mission to make the life of all the Indian happy and ease of living for everybody without any fear without any fear and uh, that perception that as a particular religion member, we have some insecurity or we are feeling uh, discriminated or looked down. We have to feel and conf become confident as equal citizens. That is most important. Well, I think, I think on that note, I'll, I'll leave that thought with the people watching this broadcast. Okay, and it's an important thought. I'm hoping you you share it and circulate it uh, because it's a it's a typification of what India actually is. So, if you are a Muslim Indian, it is reasonable for you to expect and hope that your government is doing everything possible to make your Hajj pilgrimage the easiest, most cost effective, least stressful as possible. That is them doing their jobs. So when we are traveling in record numbers and we can expect the Saudis to take a special interest for arrangements for Indian pilgrims, these are good things that are taking place. Now I know the focus of the country might right now be in Ayodhya, but all of this is happening simultaneously. I thank my guests. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.